where did it all start for you? When did you get this first interest in wellness, nutrition, diet, etc.? I think it's about the changes that you can see in in you. I mean, I, I started from a personal basis of really wanting to optimise my performance. So in a way, I came from trying to optimise my mindset. So really saying, OK, if I don't have to worry about how I feel, I don't have to worry about my energy, then how can I, how can I be great? You know, how can I be great? Can you help out with stress? Can you, can you help alleviate stress? Yeah, I mean, the, basically, with, stre with the stress reaction, it, it runs in a cycle where, of course, if you are feeling stressed, because of biochemical activity in the body, which is basically drops and plummets of blood sugar, it, it tends to make you, you crave and, and uh, grab food that actually picks up your blood sugar and then plummets it again. So you're getting a stress cycle, basically. What drives you to help people to change? Because that's a tough old programme there. Getting them to turn up in the first place, get them to think a bit more strategically, think holistically about what they're going to do, and it's a journey, not a one-off. What drives you to help people in that, what seems quite complex? I think the thing is, actually, it's, it's extremely s simple. It's extremely simple. I think what, what's complex is getting people to engage with it. And um, I love it because actually people do engage with it. We start off with very basic, what seems like almost simple measures. I mean, it's deceptively simple, if you like. But if you can engage people in just making very small changes and they see just such a massive difference in how they feel and how they look and how they begin to sleep and how their skin, and you know the mental attitude it's a no-brainer that they're going to take the next step can you help a business change can you help a business become more well for a better search for a better term yeah I think it, it, it does it, it, it's almost like looking under the engine of a car which is you almost like can't put a just a, a piece of stocking around the fan belt you know mend it that way you, you have to start off by saying what's the culture you have to look at how people are being driven you have to look at um, in, in other words, that time management thing. You know, I, I hate that sort of term, time management, because obviously it's management of the person, not management of the time. Mm -hmm. But it's about sort of it's about prioritising that and realising that when people plan their plan their work week, that all of that is blocked in and all of that is kind of planned. That then you get people to succeed. You've seen the benefits of the work you do in a company, but it begs the question: Why wouldn't a company want a well fit? healthy workforce or are they just too busy? I think they're a bit scared actually it's my you know in, in other words if you're admit, admitting to stress or admitting to that you've got a problem then you may be admitting that you're working your staff in a, in a, in a way that isn't beneficial to the staff. So I sort of get the benefits for the individual what sort of benefits can an organisation or business get? I think when people are operating at their best and they've got the proper fuel in the tank and they've got that foundation in, then you can sort of see that absenteeism, so staff turnover, has got to be better because you're getting people striving towards wellness as opposed to sickness. So we see that people, you know, individually start performing better, so as a team they start performing better. What's the one tip? you'd give to someone who has, who's never approached a nutritionist, never thought about wellness, never thought about changing their lifestyle, getting the priority, getting to foundation. What's the first step? Eat breakfast. Mm -hmm.